All right, then good 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 evening, everybody. Um, I am Ann Spadaro from South Point Hospitals Wellness, and uh, this is the first of our uh, wellness series where we're focusing on financial wellness. I work together with Carolyn Sanford, and we have partnered up with First Federal of Lakewood, uh, Chilana Williams. Um, who's going to present our first uh, topic today with debt management. Um, we are very proud and happy to be able to provide this opportunity for everybody. We do want to let you know our presentation is being recorded with hope that we can share this with others in the future. We will have our question and answers at the end of our program. However, if you wish to put in questions into the chat, you may do so at any time. Uh, so we will spend some time at, when we're done um, at the end of the program for the questions. Jelana is a senior vice president. She is the chief community development officer at First Federal of Lakewood. She has over 30 years of experience with financial service industry and supports business unit leaders throughout our community outreach and relationship building. In addition, she provides strategic guidance in the deployment of capital expanding the scope of community development and raising vi visibility in Northeast Ohio and the Columbus markets. As part of her senior management team, she works to ensure that First Federal of Lakewood is lending, investing, and servicing the communities in which it conducts business. And she works very closely with community development. So we are happy to have her present today for you uh, our first series with South Point Hospital. Thank you, Annie. I'd like to thank Annie and Carolyn. I've always referred to you as the dream team because you've been great to work with. Also, I'd like to personally welcome all of you to the first of our series of financial wellness workshops. A special thank you to Dr. Margaret McKenzie and Cleveland Clinic South Point Hospital for the invitation to collaborate in offering this program. First Federal Lakewood is a community bank and we welcome opportunities such as this because we place emphasis on empowering our customers and communities by providing financial education that enables them to make sound financial decisions and to set attainable financial goals. Joining me today is my colleague, Kyle Sarver, manager of First Federal Lakewood's Garfield Heights branch. Kyle has been with First Federal Lakewood for six years and enjoys assisting our customers with their banking needs. He supports local communities and nonprofit organizations. And for example, he hosts back to school drives in the branch and enjoys working with local school districts to help young people learn early in life about basic money management skills. So Kyle will be co-presenting with me today. You know, this is really great that you have spent the time to come out and join us for this workshop because as we begin the new year with renewed hope, positivity, and optimism, most of us will make plans to live a healthier lifestyle, to be physically fit, and we want to have the same view of our financial well-being. This series of workshops is the step in the right direction, and we cover topics like today's session on debt management. We'll also be talking about how to become a homeowner, and then our last session, will have an opportunity to learn from one of First Federal Lakewood's investment advisors. He'll discuss how to plan for retirement because whether you are start, just starting off in your career or you are ending your career, this is an important topic and workshop that you shouldn't miss. So let's get started. So next slide, thank you. So the goals for today's workshop are all focused on giving you a realistic perspective about debt, presenting strategies for managing your own debt, and then supporting you on considering next steps. By the end of today's workshop, you'll be able to understand why people find themselves in debt and the most common types of debt. You'll be able to use and analyze budgeting and debt management strategies, compare various debt management solutions, and then create a personal plan for how to manage your debt. You know, debt is something that millions of people deal with. Learning how to manage debt is the most important thing a person can do to improve their financial health. When you mention debt to some people, 
sometimes they may get a pit, you know, in their stomach, they may feel stress. But in reality, this is something that many people face on a daily basis. And it can really affect the quality of your life. Did you know that over 75% of all American adults are in debt? So you can see why this would be a, a, a good topic to consider. Now on this, on this slide that you see, this shows the reality of debt today by looking at the different age groups. Notice here at Generation Z on your slide. See, these ones are those ones that are now old enough to get loans and get credit cards and their average debt is about $22,000. And a lot of it is student debt. Then you have your millennials. Credit card bills are the leading source of debt. And on an average, millennials owe $42,000 in debt. Then your Generation X. Now they're homeowners. They have home mortgages. And that's usually their primary source of debt. And then they are carrying about $39,000 in additional debt. And then lastly, our baby boomers. Now theirs is the second lowest amount, carrying about $36,000 on the average. But surprisingly, according to a recent study, mm -hmm. credit card debt is the primary source of debt for this group. So now, uh, can you please do the next slide? And please excuse my dog. One second. He likes to bark at people walking down the street. Sorry about that. <laughs> So we have here uh, our, a poll, and you'll notice that in this discussion, we're going to do a lot of polls because it's a great way to learn. Now, in this poll, the question asks, how do you think having debt negatively affects your life? The choices you have are, does it affect your mental health, relationships, life goals, or planning for emergencies? Now, you can either raise your hand to answer or you can put your answer in the chat, whatever you feel comfortable with. But we'd like to hear from you. What would you say would be the answer to that? And we'll give you a few minutes to think about it. How do you think having debt negatively affects your life? We have to choose one? No, you can choose whatever you want. I see oh. someone said uh, all of the above. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, here we go. We, uh, most of them say, all the chats are saying all of the above. And someone said relationships. You all are correct. Um, debt can affect all of these areas of life. So we really want to concentrate on how to manage it. Um, some more statistics show that 21% of people say debt has caused household tension. 31% say debt has an impact on their health. Plus, 15% of millennials say that they've held off on getting married and having children because of debt. So really, you can really see how debt can affect all areas of your life. So what's the solution? Managing it. And that's why we're here today. But before we get into a deeper discussion about managing debt, let's talk about what is debt. And as you can see on the screen, the next slide, it gives the definition. Um, but when you ask most people, they may say debt is when you owe money or when you borrow money. And that is a good start, but debt does come in various forms. Because would you say that uh, debt would also fall into the credit card uh, area, having credit card debt, car loans, medical bills, mortgages, all of these things. So it covers a, a, a wide range. So the definition of debt is the amount of money owed by a person of their or their household for products or services they purchased on credit. That's the definition. And then when it comes to paying back your debt, then you, you're charged interest. And if you can go to, okay, you're good, Kyle. You're right on top of the slides. Thank you. So um, as I was saying, uh, interest is charged on the amount that you borrow. Interest is the amount that um, you have to pay back 
on top of the money that you borrow. So when um, we did some research or when researchers um, had looked at this, they said that in 2018, credit card interest rates were around 17% on the average, while car loan interest rates were about 5%. But now when you think about these interest rates, when you borrow money, you want to get the lowest amount, the lowest interest rate possible so that you can not have a high payment. But on the other hand, if you're investing your money in a savings account, you're looking for a savings account to put your money in, then you want the highest interest rate possible so that you can earn more on your investment. Also, interest rates can be either variable or fixed. When you have a fixed variable, um, I'm sorry, when you have a fixed interest rate, then you know what your, your uh, monthly payments is gonna be each month. There's no surprises. But when you have a variable rate, then you don't know because it can change. It could be due to the economy or maybe the credit agreement that you signed. So you wanna be careful when you're deciding on borrowing money and what type of interest rate you want if you want a fixed rate or variable. And, and I'll use my um, experience as, as a loan officer. At one point I was a loan officer and um, in doing residential lending, some consumers would opt to do a variable rate when purchasing a home because the rate was lower than the fixed. But at the same time, you have to be conscious of certain circumstances. How long are you gonna be in the, the home? And then I saw sadly that many opted for the variable rate. And when the rate increased, they were surprised and not prepared. So it's all about knowing your circumstances, what you can afford, so you're not surprised. So these basic definitions of interest rates are not meant to guide your purchasing decisions, but it's just to help you to understand how everything works, which is gonna help you to better manage your debt. Next slide. Okay, you're there. You're going too fast, Kyle. <laughs> so uh, the next slide here uh, you'll see is called the regrettable roof repair. So I'm gonna tell you a story about Ralph. In the middle of a particularly wet winter, Ralph's roof started to leak. He called the roofing company and they quoted him $3,000 in repairs. But Ralph had just purchased a new car and he was paying on his son's college tuition. He just didn't have the money on, on hand. So in addition, on top of all of that, the forecast was a rainy weekend and he had his mother-in-law coming that weekend for a visit. What was Ralph gonna do? He did what most of us would do. He charged it on his credit card. Now the credit card had an interest rate, or I should say an APR of 17%. That's the interest rate plus the fees that's involved in getting the credit. He had an interest rate of 17% and he had planned to pay down the, the debt with paying $50 per month. Okay, $3,000, that's not too bad. Until you factor in the interest payments. So how much did this $3,000 purchase end up costing Ralph? And how long did it take him to pay it off? Well, let's see by taking a look at this poll. If Ralph makes a monthly payment of $50 per month on his credit with that 17% interest rate APR, how long do you think it would be for him to pay off that $3,000 roof repair? And I'd like your answers on this one as well, if you don't mind if you can put it in the chat. Do you think that it was 135 months it would take him to pay off the debt? 35 months, 11 months, or 95 months? Someone says D, 95 months? Good guess. Anybody else? Okay, someone said B. Good guess, 35 months. Anybody else? Those are all great answers. It's gonna take Ralph 135 months to pay off the credit card. That's over 11 years. So by the time Ralph pays this off, he's gonna need a brand new roof. And what's worse, 
Ralph will end up paying an extra $3,743 in interest for the credit card loan, meaning that when it's all said and done, this roof repair will cost Ralph nearly $7,000. So guess what? Now he's in debt. So this exercise is really just to, it's just to show you how much interest charged can really put you in debt if you're not careful and then to help you guide your decisions. Um, I always suggest when uh, managing money, and this is all kind of part of budgeting as well, and Kyle will touch on this, but when you, when you talk about managing money, part of your plan should be paying yourself first. Even if you don't have a lot to put aside, it's always best to put something aside for emergencies, for, un for unforeseen things that may occur, or even just because you want to plan for your future, um, take a vacation or something like that. It's always good to have a savings account to fall back on. So let's take another poll. What do you think the biggest source of debt is in America? Do you think it's student loans, credit cards, home mortgages, or payday loans? What would you say? Anybody in the chat? Credit card, someone said, okay. Good answer. Actually, in fact, it's uh, mortgage debt and credit cards. They're tied. Mortgage debt, when you think about it, it kind of makes sense because that's a huge purchase. But credit card debt, where is that money really going? According to a recent survey, it's going toward entertainment. It's going toward dining and nightlife. And you can see this all on, your on the uh, slide right there, where all of this money is going on the credit card. So people are using credit cards for mostly everything in life. And you have to be careful of that because what happens that people forget, you have to pay it back. So be careful of making charge, you know, making it a regular thing to just charge everything on a credit card. So even though there are all these different types of debt, not all debt is the same. Some debt is often considered good debt if you can believe that. But the rest of the debt is called bad debt. So this might sound different from what you've uh, ever heard before, good debt versus bad debt. Most people think that all debt is bad, but is it? If you notice on the slide here, it talks about what good debt is. So debt that provides you with financial advantage is sometimes referred to as good debt because of the financial rewards. It counters what the purchase of the debt was for. Whereas with mortgage debt, that's, that's often considered good debt because it's tax deductible. But as long as the property appreciates, which most times it does, but if it doesn't and you're carrying a high interest rate, then it becomes bad debt. It's similar with student loans. That's usually considered good debt because when you get an education, it increase your opportunity um, to make more money. And um, so that's considered good debt. But what if you don't, what if you don't finish your, your degree and you leave? Then that could turn into bad debt. So when you think about good debt and bad debt, it's still money that you owe and that you have to pay back. So when you're considering debt management, you want to consider how much debt you have compared to how much you make. And so that is gonna bring us to the next slide, which talks about debt to income ratio. One way lenders and other experts may access financial help is by looking at your DTI or debt to income ratio. So with that, how you determine your debt to income ratio is that you would take the monthly debts that you make or that you've made, I should say, your payments, and then you would divide it by the number, by the uh, your gross monthly income. And that's before your taxes. And that will give you your DTI. If you look at the example here on the slide, Adia, if you look at her uh, debt compared to her month monthly gross income, you divide that $5,000 with the $2,000 in debt, 
it gives you her DTI of 40%. And you can do this for your own, um, for your own self as well. You take what your monthly, gross monthly income, divide it by your monthly debt, and it'll give you your DTI. In your, your participant um, guide that you have, you have this slide and you have that chart, and then you can do that later at your own leisure to see you know, how that turns out for you. And it'll be a nice gauge to see your financial health. But just as a guide, as a standard, according to, um, did you, uh, can you turn the, the slide? Uh, thank you, Kyle, next slide. So um, if you look at that, according to financial experts, your DTI ratio should be lower than 40% and below 37% is even better. So if your DTI ratio is too high, there are two main things that you can do. You can increase your monthly earnings or reduce your debt. So we know that it's not that easy to increase your monthly income just by saying, okay, I, I need to increase my monthly income. But um, you can control how much money you spend. So that comes with being able to discern your, what are your wants versus your needs. And sometimes that's hard to do and you have to get tough with yourself. But overall, it's going to help you to make sure you're not spending too much and getting in over your head. So the next thing that's going to really help you to manage your money, manage your debt, is by creating a nice solid budget. And Kyle, my colleague, is going to handle this part of the presentation as he goes into establishing and maintaining a good budget. Thank you, Chalana. As Chalana mentioned, um, creating a budget can um, lead to healthy lifestyles. There is a rule for creating a budget, but it is not a hard and fast rule. Experts show here that you should spend 50% of your gross income on your needs. That is your mortgage payment, um, your medicines that you need, food, utility bills, and any minimum credit card payments that you have to make. Experts say that you should spend 30% on your wants. That is your extra cup of coffee in the morning at Dunkin' Donuts or going out to eat instead of eating in. And 20% should go towards your savings and debts. You should create a savings account and pay yourself first. Um, maybe put it towards an additional retirement and pay off those lower credit cards, lower balanced credit cards. We're going to take a look at another example of Adia's um, budget. As we mentioned, she makes $5,000 a month in her income. Now, in order to calculate if Adia is spending 50% on, on her needs, we're going to take how much she spends on her needs, and we're going to divide that by her monthly income of $5,000. And as you can see, the $3,700 divided by her $5,000 turns out to 75%. And her wants turns out to be 20%. That's only leaving her about 5% towards her savings. So maybe Adia should take a look and reconsider her needs or maybe reconsider what she has in her wants to add a little bit more to her savings. We have a poll question here. Um, we're going to discuss credit scores. And what is a credit score? It's a computer generated number that creditors use to prove how worthy you are to get a loan. And they say 850 is the best score. Anything over 700 or over 700 is a great score. Anything below that may have may affect your interest rates or you getting the type of loan you're looking to get. I have a poll question here, and that is, what is the most in fact most important factor in determining your credit score? Is it a your payment history? B your available credit? C, how long you've had credit, D, new credit, or E, a mix of all different types of credits. Go ahead and place your answers in the chat box for me, please. All right, we got a B and an A. Those are all good answers. Does anybody else want to take a guess? All righty. 
That's correct. So the answer is A, your payment history is the most important factor in determining your credit score. Creditors look to see if you're paying your bills on time and how much you're paying. If you can't pay your bills, that can be a red flag to creditors that you're not able to pay your bills. So why should they give you that loan? I have one more question for you. Um, how important is it to have all this debt? How important is your outstanding debt? How do you think that can affect your credit score? Anybody wanna take a guess? Okay, by having too much debt and not enough credit, it can show creditors that you are having troubles paying your bills and that can increase your debt to income ratio. And having too much debt can also affect your credit score. We're gonna take a look at how or who else can see your credit score. Credit card companies and other lenders, cell phone companies, rental properties, utilities, Sometimes your employers can take a look at your credit depending on how, what state you're in. Any government assistant programs, government license, and auto and home insurance companies can also take a look at your credit. We're gonna go, I have a story for you guys and we're going to take a look at how having a lower credit score can affect your interest rate. Both Min Ho and Javier purchased a home for $300,000 with a 20% down payment on a 30-year mortgage. As you can see, Min Ho's interest rate is at 5.5%, and that's because Min Ho had a lower credit score. Javier had a 4.5% interest rate, and his credit score was higher. So as you can see, Min Ho's yearly interest became 13,200 versus Javier's of 10,800 with a difference in monthly pay or monthly payments of about $2,400. And that can be over $60,000 over what they paid for that home in interest. So paying attention to your credit score and your bills is very important. Now, how can we work towards recovering your debt? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have 20% um, should go towards either your savings and debt recovery. So you should get to consider using 20% of your funds towards these five things in the following orders. Create an emergency fund with an, uh, funds to last you about three to six months. Now that may seem like a lot. So if you cannot manage that, try to hit at least $500, most experts say. You also want to maximize your 401k, especially if your employer will match. Why you might ask? because if your employers match, they are giving you money towards your retirement and who doesn't like free money? You'll want to pay off those higher interest and high APR debts because as you noticed in the previous example, we can pay a lot of extra money in interest. You should contribute 15% of your gross income to your retirement accounts as an, an IRA or your 401k. And if you can, Pay off your lower interest debts, and this should be done by reducing your wants. So taking a look at what you really spend your money on in your wants, do you ask yourself, do you really need to go out to dinner today, or can I just make something at home? Or do I really need that cup of coffee every morning from Dunkin' Donuts? Taking a look and reassessing your finances can allow you to find ways to save extra money. We also have two major strategies in repaying debt. As you can see, we have the avalanche method, and that is to pay off your debts with the highest interest. Or we can do the snowball method, which pays off your debts with the lowest balance. We have Kaylee's following debts over here, and she has three major or three credit cards, or two credit cards and a personal loan. If Kaylee were to use the avalanche method, which um, debt should she pay off first? Go ahead and place your answers in the chat box. A, good. That's correct. According to the avalanche method, Kaylee should pay off her major credit card because her interest rate there is a 26%. Now on the flip side, what if Kaylee wanted to use the snowball method? 
what debt should she pay off first if she wanted to use the snowball method? Excellent, very good. The answer to that is B, the retail credit card because her personal balance is only $800 there. Now we're gonna talk about the dues of debt management. You do want to make sure that you, can, you contact and communicate with creditors if you are having issues paying your mortgage or any of your debts. You do wanna get credit counseling as they can be a nonprofit organization and have the tools to get you the debt management education that you need and financial skills. You also should consider consolidating your debts. And if you are way in over your head, you might want to consider hiring a debt or a settlement attorney. What you should not do is let the credit card company close out any of your credit cards. Definitely do not hide from them and do not make it a habit to borrow from your retirement. Not only that, but if you borrow from your retirement, you can also get charged additional taxes and fees for an orderly withdrawal. Do not trust all debt settlement companies without doing your research first. So we are going to take a look um, at another example of debt consolidation. As you can see here, Carmen's debts before consolidation, she has three credit cards and her average balance, her average interest rate is 17%. The total balance is 19,500 and her total payments are $145. Carmen looked into doing some debt consolidation and as you can see, she got an interest rate of 16.5%. Her balance, yes, is still the same of 19,500, but what you'll see is her new minimum payment is $95. That's an extra $50 in her pocket that she can spend on maybe paying off another smaller debt or put $50 towards a savings account. When you can't pay your debts, you want to um, make sure that the creditors are not harassing you. But as you can see, about 35% of adults with a credit history have a debt in average of over $5,178. And in 2019, there are more than 750,000 bankruptcy filings. So what happens when your debt gets into collections? This not only affects your credit score, but it stays on your credit report for seven years. Collectors may sue you, which may lead to wage garnishment, liens on your property, and foreclosure or repossession of your assets. What should you do? Talk to an attorney. Know your rights under the Fair Debt Collection Proce Practices Act, which are creditors or collections people should not be able to call you before or after 9 p.m., call you at work if you tell them not to do so, talk to anyone except your spouse about your debts, harass, abuse, or threaten you in any way, misrepresent how much you owe, and use lies to deceive you into repaying your debt. If you feel that a collection agency is doing this, it is important to report a complaint to the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau or your state's attorney general's office. Make sure that you have all of your communication in writing and save all of those correspondence. Now, if debt consolidation isn't right for you, you can also file for bankruptcy. And there are two types of bankruptcies. There's chapter seven, and that takes three to six months to discharge your debt. Income must be below the state minimum. You may be, you may be, it may be an option for people who do not have a lot of liquid assets or properties. Or you could file chapter 13, and that is for people who have income and used to make payments of over three to five years. You must have a high enough income to pay off your debts. And it may be an option for people to generally earn a reliable source of income and can make plans to pay them off within three to five years. It's important to know that bankruptcy remains on your credit report for 10 years. 
you may be forced to liquidate some of those assets and you may not be able to discharge all of your debt. So if you are considering um, filing for bankruptcy, make sure you talk to a consumer attorney or a bankruptcy attorney before doing so. Um, on page four of your reference guide is your financial health worksheet. This has a breakdown of everything that we discussed today. Um, if you guys wanna take five minutes and go ahead and fill out this form. If we don't have the participation guide, um, we can move on. Okay. So in conclusion, today you have learned why people find themselves in debt and the most common types of debt, how to utilize and analyze budget and debt management strategies, how to compare various debts and multiple solutions, and how to create a personal plan at managing your debt. You now have the critical knowledge and skills of an elite American who can call themselves financially healthy. With financial health, you will be, live your life with less stress, more confidence, better physical health, and stronger relationships. Most importantly, you'll be able to do what this debt has been holding you back from, and that is making your dreams come true. I want to thank everyone today um, for coming to this presentation. And as Chalana mentioned, um, I'm the branch manager at the Garfield Heights location. I will place my information in the chat box, but does anybody have any questions or comments in today's presentation? Okay. At this time, I would like to thank everyone again, and I'd like to turn it over to either Annie or Carolyn. Okay, I uh, was always takes a minute to unmute, but thank you very much, uh, both Chalana and Kyle for uh, the wonderful presentation and for Carolyn for all your work to help coordinate this with South Point Hospital. Um, we're very happy that, uh, to provide this series and are looking forward to, to more of them and um, looking forward to um, saving more money and uh, reducing debt. Uh, this was very helpful. I think this was so well presented, very, very well presented, uh, great information. Um, I believe that our audience that we had today and the audience that we are going to attract and the, and the ones that we'll be able to show this to since there was a recording will really benefit from this. I want to just comment on that when you made the comment that you are a community uh, banking facility that I, I think that is an understatement. You guys are truly engaged in doing the best that you can in educating and empowering your public and your community. So kudos. Um, I, I just think it's, it's fantastic what you have presented and what you have available as far as the other services and resources and tools on your website. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate that. Welcome. Okay, well, if there is nothing more and no further questions, we will uh, end a little bit early for our first series. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you again, you. everyone. Thank